Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Chargers Analytics with Arjun, here to talk about contract projections for two of the Chargers' internal free agents, Drew Tranquil and Morgan Fox. Now, Drew Tranquil, I feel like, is more of a fan favorite than Morgan Fox, but I do feel like a lot of fans want Morgan Fox back as well. And I'm here to talk about whether the Chargers can or cannot do it based on the projection of the contracts that both of them have. So really quickly, I want to share my screen, take you guys back to a tweet I sent back uh, literally a week ago that I'm recording this, recording this on Wednesday. Um, I sent this on February 15th, which is the Wednesday before. And I just ranked how I wanted the Chargers free agents to come back. So I had Drew Trank Drew Tranquil in a tier of his own, just bring him back. I, I thought he's a player, his price isn't going to be too high where they, you know, it's not going to be too much of an overpay. And they should bring him back, you know, at the right they should just bring him back because I didn't think he was going to cost that much. Now, unfortunately, as I'll talk about throughout this video, according to some new information that I got, um, you know, his market is going to be a little bit higher than ex people expect. And unfortunately, I think we're going to have to bump him down to the top player in in the second tier, which is like them back at the right price. So in my last video, I did a video about Trey Pipkins and what his market value is going to be. Um, and today I'll also be doing a video on Morgan Fox and why I think the Chargers should consider bringing him back, obviously at the right price. And unfortunately, why Drew Tranquil will eventually fall to that tier two of bringing him back, but it has to be at the right price. Now, just to give an overview, right? Like linebackers are one of those positions that are uh, devalued um, in the modern NFL, right? You have running backs and linebackers. Running backs, obviously, if you, you probably heard the slogan, running backs don't matter. It's more of a product of the offensive line. It's a product of opposing run defenses. As long as you have a good offensive line, most of the times you can stick a running back in and be successful running the ball. Linebackers are tricky because linebackers are one of those positions where if they're good, they're probably not going to be targeted. If they're bad, they're going to get exposed in coverage and they're going to get exposed in run defense. Teams are going to run right at them, right? So it's not that it's like a devalued position. It's just that the impact that they make sometimes doesn't really justify paying a large cost. Now, if you have a top of the market linebacker, Fred Warner, uh, Darius Leonard, and Roquan Smith, then yes, like those guys deserve top of the market money because they do, th they play linebacker at an elite level and they create a lot of havoc from taking away the middle of the field, which is the most efficient place to throw the ball. Now, again, this, we're here to talk about Drew Tranquil and, you know, I, initially his market, from my understanding, from the analysis of, of Brad Spielberg at P PFF, who is a salary cap analyst there, we thought his market was more in the 4.5 to 5.25, 5.5 APY, million dollar APY range. Now, we got some new information that unfortunately, I think signals that Drew Tranquil might be having a larger market on the open market than we thought. So the contract that I'm showing on my screen right now kind of reflects this. We are looking at a three-year contract, $21 million in total value, which is a $7 million APY with a $9 million signing bonus, $10.5 million in full guarantees, which is 50% of his contract. So again, we thought, or at least I thought his market was more in the 4.5 to $5.5 million APY range. But I think the mark, I think he will have a strong market, which is why I'm, I bumped it up to $7 million per year. Now, just to, again, to walk you through the contract, $9 million signing bonus. Outside of that, the only fully guaranteed part of the deal is his uh, base salary in year one, which is 2023. And so his cap hits go 4.5 million to 6.5 million to 10 million. Essentially, you know, just like the Trey Pipkins contract, this is almost a two year deal, right? And it's a two year, $11 million deal. So 5.5 API, APY, which is what I thought his market would and honestly should be, but that's that's essentially what this deal is. It's a two-year deal, eleven million dollars. The third year is you know a little bit inflated. It's it's a ten million dollar cap hit, but there is only a three million dollar dead cap charge. So you could you can get out of this contract, save about six seven million dollars in cap savings if you cut them in twenty twenty five. You would incur a three million dead cap charge, but again, that is exact essentially what this deal is. Now, you might be asking me, Arjun, is is Drew Tranko really worth? two times what Kaiser White is worth. Because if you remember, Kaiser White signed about a one-year, $3 million deal, uh, you know, about $3.5 million when all the incentives came in from his contract. Is, is Drew Tranquil worth two times what Kaiser White got? And the answer is, I don't think so. Drew Tranquil does a lot of things well as a linebacker, at least above the league average. There's some things that he doesn't do well at all. 
So really quick, I just wanted to compare Drew Tranquil's 2022 season to Kaiser White's 2021 season, right? So both of their contract years, which is what essentially teams are paying for. So we look at pass rushing numbers, right? Drew Tranquil, 15 total pressures and five sacks. Kaiser White, 12 total pressures and one sack. So right off the bat, Drew Tranquil with four, at least four more sacks, right? So you're going to have you know, that kind of impact on his salary and negotiations, right? Like teams are going to value those sacks heavily because teams pay for sacks. We'd like to, the you know, analytics movement is trying to get teams to pay for pressures, but sacks are still king. So you're still going to see teams pay for Drew's, you know, inflated sack, or not inflated, but his sack total at five versus Kaiser's at one. We look at tackles, right? Tranquil, 133 tackles plus assists. Kaiser, a little bit higher than that, 145 tackles plus assists, right? So, you know, very similar in the tackling department. The only difference, Drew Tranquil missed 24 tackles this year. He had a 15.3 missed tackle rate compared to Kaiser's 7.1 missed tackle rate. So that is, that is, I think, the one area of Tranquil's game where I think he's really not that good at. He's not a good run defender. And if you remember, Tranquil and Kaiser both converted safeties from Notre Dame. So it's not too surprising that both of them kind of struggle in, in run defense and tranquil especially um has has struggled in run defense you know i think especially this year when he took on more of an expanded role he was the green dot he was the defensive play caller on the field when when he took over for derwin but i think where he really excels at is his coverage and i think he's a little bit of a he's a little bit of a better coverage defender than kaiser is both of them only you know they have both uh, kaiser had two picks in his contract year tranquil with one and i believe this one was the first game of the year but i think you know just talking to some people that i, I really value they do see drew as one of the better coverage linebackers in the league um and i think that you know, facet of his play being good in coverage is something that GM should and will value when it comes to his free agency market. So we think about what Drew Tranquil brings to you know team as a whole, above average coverage defender, below average run defender, a great blitzer, and he plays special teams. That's, a, that's another important part. He plays special teams. He's a well-rounded player that can also contribute on special teams. And, and you know, teams will pay for special teams value. Like there are spe special teams specialty players in the league who only play special teams but the fact that he can play linebacker and special teams i think will um boost his market a little bit so this is what a three-year deal looks like to compare drew to other players in this like apy range right so we can start with josie jewel who's who signed a two-year 11 million dollar deal which is essentially what mine is but also we're, we're adding that third third year to kind of you know boost the APY a little bit so he had a 2.25 million dollar signing bonus chargers again their signing bonuses have been a little bit higher and I think because of Tranquil's exceptional contract year or not exceptional but like at least a, a good contract year I think he could see a larger pay bump there but it, it's a very it's a very similar deal 1.5 million base salary in year one exactly what I had so again this deal is rooted in some market principles another one that's interesting uh, Miles Jack right so Jack signed a huge deal with the Jaguar I think back in 2020, he got cut last year and he signed a two year, $16 million deal, $8 million APY. And again, very similar principles. He's, he had a 3.2, or he had a $6.5 billion signing bonus. So that's 3.25 prorated over two years. $1.5 million base salary, exactly what I gave uh, in year one, and doesn't have any guaranteed money outside of the signing bonus, which is expected that, you know, 3.25 uh, prorated is a relatively high signing bonus. The last a player I wanted to touch on, Dre Greenlaw, who signed a two-year $16.4 million deal, $8.2 million in APY. So it, it's, again, very similar structures. You have a low uh, base salary in year one. You know, uh, Dre had a, about a $4.6 million signing bonus. So over two years, that's about $2.3 million in proration. Um, so it's a little bit lower than than Tranquil's, but uh, Greenlaw also um, got a little bit of a, you know, higher uh, APY. So I think Tranquil should see a little bit of a higher signing bonus. I also wanted to create a two-year a two year deal to see what that looks like. Because you can see Greenlaw, Jack, and Jewel, the three contracts I showed, all have two-year deals. Teams are reluctant to pay, uh, you know, three or four-year deals to these tier three or four linebackers because linebackers, I think, have a short shelf life. And sometimes, you know, you lose a step, you're not able to keep up with these athletic tight ends and coverage. And unfortunately, that, that's just the name of the game. So a two-year deal 
that's that's the same APY would look like this. I think you see a lower signing bonus similar to what Jewel and and Drager and like got. So two point five and five million dollar signing bonus, two point five million per year. We have a two million dollar base salary in year one, fully guaranteed as normal, and a seven million dollar P five in year two. Um, again, this could you could see this as a one year four point five million dollar deal, and he gets cut in year two because there's only a two point five million dollar dollar dead cap hit. But I think this is a, a relatively fair deal if, if teams decide to go the two year route. Now, really quickly, I also want to just create to create some a contract in case Tranquil's market comes in what I expected it to come in at after the season was over, which is more of the four point five to five point five million dollar range. So this is what a deal would look like. So it's three years, sixteen point five million dollars uh, in total value, five point five million in APY with a six million dollar signing bonus, and this number should be fifteen. Yeah, and so 45.5 of the contract uh, fully guaranteed. So this is what, you know, a, a three year deal could look like if Tranquil's market comes in a little bit lower than what other people think and what I think it, it will come in at. But um, this is a, what a three year deal would look like, you, you know, pause your screen if if you're watching this on YouTube. And this is what a two year deal would look like at that same cap hit, a little bit higher cap hit or a little bit higher APY and total value for a two year deal. Um, but again, it's it's again rooted in the principles of what the the linebacker market has shown. So that is what Drew Tranquil's contract is. You know, I'm expecting to look like. I also created it for created a contract for Morgan Fox. Fox is interesting because this is going to be his fourth contract that he signed. He signed a two year deal with Carolina after he, after he left the Rams. One year deal for one point one million dollars for uh, with the Chargers, which was a you know great. Uh, value signing for the Chargers at the time. And I think he outperformed that contract significantly. Um, I think his contract or his value is going to rise. And I don't really know if he's going to be able to resign with the Chargers or go elsewhere, but this is what I think his value will be. Um, if you go to pff.com and you look at the free agents tab, you can also see that my coworker, Brad Spielberger, also has him at this number, which, you know, I think it's good when me and him agree on something. So, um, this is what a contract will look like. Two years, $9 million for Morgan Fox, a $3 million signing bonus, uh, base salary in year one, $2 million, base salary in year two, $4 million, with his base salary in year one fully guaranteed. So it's, you know, $5 million of the nine five million of the $9 million total value is fully guaranteed, which is 55.6%. Again, there's not a lot of players like Morgan Fox who've kind of switched teams, you know, significantly year to year after their first contract. I think at this point in his career, he's he's only 28, but he's now signed, you know, two deals, which are two years and one year in length. So I think he is going to be a shorter contract length type of guy to finish us finish out his career, which is why I am going with the two year deal. And there, there are some comparable players. You can compare them to guys like like Justin Jones or Sheldon Rankins on the market. But I think Morgan Fox had a, a pretty good year rushing the passer from the interior for the Chargers. And at this price, I would consider bringing him back because I think this is a relatively fair price for him, especially given the season that he had. And there really is no interior pass rusher for the Chargers on the team right now. And I think Morgan Fox would be able to fill that role if they signed him to this contract. So... Um, that's going to wrap it up for us today. Um, I really hope everyone enjoyed the kind of contract breakdown I was able to give for Drew Tranquil and Morgan Fox. My end prediction, I think Tranquil walks and I think I think Morgan Fox stays. Um, I think even if Drew Tranquil, his market is what I'm expecting it to be, which is the 5.5 million or like 5 million-ish range. Um, I do think he still walks because Telesco's history of re-signing players that he drafted isn't that high and I think Tranquil falls in that bucket and if they let Kaiser go what's stopping them from letting Tranquil go in free agency right and especially if if his market is seven million dollars APY I think there's no way the Chargers can resign him and at that price I would be fine if the Chargers moved on from him but even if his market is lower than seven million dollars I don't think they're going to sign him, even though I would sign him uh, for anything less than 5.25 or or at least if, if he comes in at 5.25 or lower, I would try to sign him in terms of APY. But um, I don't see that happening just based on what I've been hearing and what I think he's going to eventually be getting on the market, on the open market with a lot of linebacker needy teams. Um, so yeah, Tranquil walks, Fox stays. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for us today. Uh, be on the lookout on Sunday. Me, Tyler and Steven are going to do a huge video live stream, just us going through potential ways the Chargers are going to get under the cap and you know internal free agents they might resign um, I don't know if there's any if there's going to be any cuts between this video going up on Thursday and Sunday so hopefully not and I'll be able to preview what I think they should do and, and eventually would do 
Um, but again, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, be on the lookout for any other videos from me coming in the future before uh, Free Agency opens. But as always, bolt up.